Hello, everybody. This is Martha Alter Hines with Living the One Light. So today I am here to talk about the upcoming lunar eclipse happening on Friday, May 5th, 2023. The full moon itself will be at 14, almost 15 degrees of Scorpio. And it is the second of two eclipses that we're having this this season <laughs> we just had one the first one last week um at 29 degrees of aries and so now we have the second one coming up at 14 almost 15 degrees of scorpio so i've i've talked about these eclipses in lots of ways already um <clears throat> i made a video on my own talking about the eclipses and specifically talking really about that that first eclipse and then I made a video with Verena Borrell and Jamie Goldstein talking about the eclipse season in general and then a bunch of you attended um an eclipse gathering that I had last Friday where we looked at the astronomy the astrology and the energy energetics of this eclipse season in general um, and we did a channeled guided experience of that if you happen to still want access to the recording of that you can contact me I, I have it available it, and also if you happen to feel called to join my um my infinite soul wisdom membership which starts at 22 dollars a month that is free it's it's up and recorded and all of this, th this was a special soul wisdom gathering. I, ho I hold one soul wisdom gathering per month that are free for all members at any level of the membership. And then everyone, if you join the membership at any point, you then can have access to every single one of the monthly soul wisdom gatherings that I've held, which started last July, 2022. So if you join the membership, actually, that's probably the easiest and um least expensive way <laughs> uh most accessible way financially actually to access that recording yeah so in this video i am feeling called to really drop into just a few more aspects of you know related to this this particular eclipse coming up on may 5th and so i'm going to do that and i also want to talk to you a little bit about rebecoming the one the symposium that is almost entirely completely free and is going to be held the entire month of June 2023 and it's ready for registration it's ready to sign up for you to sign up um I'll say more about it at the end but uh I do have the link in this video and um again it you know there are over 30 talks going to be available for free there's actually already one talk up that I wanted to share now because it's so amazing and beautiful, especially for those of you interested in astrology. It is an interview with Melanie Reinhardt, who many of you may know about. She is a she's a very well known astrologer um, who specializes especially in the Chiron and the Centaurs, but oh, that's what she's known for. But um, more than that, she's just an incredibly soul centered human that's how i experience her and i was really honored when she agreed to do an interview with me and um for rebecoming the one and it was a wonderful experience to be with her and i just love her as a human so i would i would love to give that to you and you can access that by joining for free anytime you want um that the symposium so again that link is here but i'll say more about the symposium in a minute and so in terms of talking about the eclipse itself um let me show you the chart and talk about what's calling to me so we can drop into it a little bit okay so this is the chart of the eclipse i have lots of lots and lots of points on here that you can ignore if you're not <laughs> if this is too much for you because I'm currently quite into um, Kuiper Belt objects and 
lots of asteroids and things like that. So there are a lot of things are up here that probably, you know, aren't necessarily that helpful right the second. But what I do want to highlight is, so this is the moon 14 at 1458 of Scorpio. Here's the sun at 1458 of Taurus. And you can see that on this eclipse, the nodes are at, at four degrees of Scorpio, four degrees of Taurus. And very near the sun is Uranus. That's really significant. And really, and also interestingly, near the moon is the asteroid Psyche. So Psyche is a goddess who, or an archetype who is associated with Eros. Eros and Psyche were lovers. And so they have a whole mythology together, a whole storyline. And, <clears throat> and I did an entire free talk and a workshop on Eros. And then of course, Psyche is sort of woven in there. Um, but that free talk on Eros is still available and you can find that the link to that on my YouTube channel. Um, it was also on EA Zoom. It was an EA Zoom talk that I did. So that is available. And, and my Eros workshop is actually still even available if that is interesting to you. Um, and I'll put those links also with this video, but so, but then what's fascinating. Okay. So we see Psyche here next to the moon. Guess who we see squaring this, the sun and the moon Eros. <laughs> so Psyche is sitting with the moon and Eros, her counterpart, <clears throat> her lover, her, you know, the, per the other main person in her myth is then squaring the sun and the moon and the other major players calling to me in in this whole configuration are Chericlo which is even more closely squaring the moon and then Hygieia which is exactly squaring Uranus I mean it's Hygieia is you know squaring ish the moon psyche and the sun but it's exactly squaring Uranus <clears throat> so what does this all mean? Um, <laughs> it's a great question. I, the theme, the overall, I mean, I'm still feeling into what do I feel like this means? And I think what I'm going to do is, is tell you my thoughts and then I'm going to drop in a little bit and see if something wants to come through, you know, not my brain. Um, but yeah, so the big themes I feel in this are um, <clears throat> a combination of energies that are helping us still to release. We still have the South Node in Scorpio and, we, and the full moon itself is in Scorpio, right? So it's still this energy of deep, deep, deep soul level releasing, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go and transform transformation happening. We have Pluto still squaring the nodes. It's going to be squaring the nodes for quite a long time. So this is this whole set of months of 2023 is just has such incredibly deep themes around transformation, the whole metamorphosis experience of being the caterpillar who then enters the chrysalis and then turns into the goop. And then maybe, you know, is in that <clears throat> liminal period that liminal space of not knowing what the heck is going to come next um or what's up and what's down that's that's the energy that we're in i would say collectively on a lot of levels so this eclipse still has those energies very strongly pluto squ not only squares the nodes but it's also ruling the south node right now and it's ruling the full moon so very very powerful energies again about letting go and then Psyche, sitting with the moon, <clears throat> is also in Scorpio. And Psyche has to do with the Psyche. <laughs> and with, um, I mean, she's an energy that I'm still feeling into and still getting to know. But certainly something that comes up for me is that Psyche is a part of us that can um feel and absorb i mean it can be psychic in many meanings of that and 
so to have a full moon in Scorpio conjunct psyche to me is just like an extra double or triple set of layers of this emphasizing this need for us to go deeply into our soul, deeply into our psyche, into the, the parts of us that are maybe not conscious and do this, this transformational experience on a cellular level, on a deep soul level, on a, a level that's so far beyond what our minds might think is rational or that we, you know, it's, it's not linear it's not something we can have control over so it's just very strong with psyche sitting there it just emphasizes the same themes to me <clears throat> and then then we have uranus sitting with the sun so and opposite that psyche and opposite the moon and uranus always for me speaks to um being in alignment with the divine intelligence and specifically again uranus is in taurus so being in alignment with divine intelligence of our bodies of ourselves as earth and <clears throat> and so it feels to me like as we're doing this deep transformational process There's this energetic and reminder and support that we do it in a way that's grounded, that we do it in a way that remembers the knowing and the intelligence of our bodies. And what's interesting then is that, like I said, Hygieia is almost precisely squaring that Uranus, like within 11 minutes of squaring exactly. So to me, Hygieia, among many other things, has to do with listening to the the divine intelligence of our bodies, the knowing of our bodies, the part of us that is the healer. And um, Verena Burrell and I run this goddess series, Conversations with the Goddesses, and we actually just did our Hygieia workshop last week. And it's recorded and available, and we would love to have you join uh, anytime. And next, well, this Saturday, actually, I'm holding a sharing circle about Hygieia for people in the Goddesses series. And next Wednesday, we're also holding a sharing circle for that. So um, if that calls to you, we would love to have you there. But on, yeah, on a general, simple level, <clears throat> one of the things that Hygieia speaks to me about is, is this reminder to listen to the wisdom to the medicine of our own knowing of our body needs um and then in a square to uranus you know just again it's like these are like these themes are getting highlighted over and over again in the various things that are going on here so so uranus is just extra aligning us in that divine intelligence um of our bodies because it's in taurus and then squaring Hygieia in your in Aquarius. So it's so fascinating. Uranus actually rules Hygieia right now. Um, yeah. So like just double, 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 triple, triple, triple <laughs> repeated themes. And then to repeat the theme yet again, we have Eros in a dance with Hygieia. This whole like next few months, it's going to be in this dance. And I talked, I did... I did a free talk on Eros and I did a free talk on Hygieia. You can find both of those on EA Zoom meetings and on linked on my YouTube channel. Um, so, but then in the Hygieia workshop in our goddess series, uh, I talked a lot about, and actually in the free talk on Eros, both places, I talked about this fact that over the coming few months, of 2023 eros and hygieia are going to be in a dance back and forth they're having they're gonna have three different conjunctions with each other this year and um and they are squaring this eclipse that you know the moon and the sun on this eclipse and also they were conjunct pluto both of them were conjunct pluto when pluto entered aquarius on march 23rd 2023 so I feel this energetic of Eros and Hygieia very strongly right now in this year, again, calling us, 
you know, with the North node still in Taurus, Uranus sitting there still in Taurus, um, <clears throat> and lots of other, lots and lots of other earth related transits happening, including Jupiter about to go into Taurus, uh, and the Mercury retrogrades happening in Taurus and Venus going retrograde in Leo opposite Eros when it's going retrograde. Anyway, many, you know, <laughs> so many themes that to me are this calling and this holding space for us to come back into the reality that we are earth bodies. We are earth beings we have an intelligence that's needing to come through our bodies that's needing to come through the earth that the earth is even i feel the earth you know trying to move as me and trying to move as us and co-create as us um one of the books that i've channeled and published is gaia speaks and i i published this in 2019 but it feels so relevant right now so relevant because basically the themes of that book are that um she's trying to she's our we are co we are here to co-create as her we are her she is us uh we're not separate that's impossible <clears throat> and we are co-creators as her so um i feel like these energies are all saying that also and and then the last component that I want to touch on is um, Chericlo. I absolutely love Chericlo. Heather Ensworth and um, Melanie Reinhardt recently did a video on Chericlo together. And I love that video. I highly recommend that video. I will put a link to that video with this video. I mean... First of all, they're both amazing humans and uh, they're both part of Rebecoming the One. And I, you know, did interviews with both of them. So I just can't say how much I love them both. But yeah, so Melanie is an expert on Chiron and Chericlo. So Chericlo is the wife of Chiron. And <clears throat> the gist of her energetic is that she... Um, she she is the the energy of holding healing space so um actually another one of the the interviews i i did for rebecoming the one is with kelly hunter who's another amazing astrologer and in the interview i did with kelly she talked about <clears throat> cosmic couples and one of the couples she talked about is chiron and chericlo and the way she described the Chiron and Chericlo dance so beautiful is that Chiron energy she said was to her is um an energetic of connecting the various parts of ourselves to come back into you know integrated wholeness and, and healing in that way so it's like reconnecting the parts in a sense and Chericlo is the energy that holds the space for that integration and that um that wholeness process to to happen and i i identify so strongly with both of those energies i have chiron on my south node i have chericlo not very far from my south node conjunct my venus you know it's a very strong energy both of them for me but i especially especially relate personally to that chericlo energy of just i feel like often the most healing thing we can possibly do is just to be just to be present with the intention of healing and um to even be in silence as we just hold healing space so chericlo is you know moves relatively slowly she's one of the centaurs like chiron and so she's in aquarius and she's been there and she's she, Chericlo in Aquarius is, to me is just like Melanie and Heather talk about in their video. Um, I really feel this Chericlo and Aquarius energy as holding space for us as the collective, holding sp space for, for us as individuals for the uniqueness that we each are, but then holding space for us 
as the collective and in the collective, which is so much what we're needing. And so much what we're needing, especially if we're doing this deep, deep, deep transformational process, which I think, I don't think, I know we are. <laughs> Most of us are. Um, I know I am. And uh, yeah, and so, so that can feel difficult, but there's Chericlo sitting there holding that space for us, as us, with us. It's just, I love Chericlo. <laughs> I love that feeling in me. I love being the one, you know, I love holding the, the role of being the Chericlo. I love having others hold that space for me. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful energy. So so yeah, so I would say to sum it all up, you know, this feels like a time that's, this eclipse is just, eclipse energy can be, you know, really quick, fast movement that that is part of the, the transformation of, of time, like the spiral, the cycles of time that are moving around and around and around. It's like, like, I feel like when I feel into the energy of an eclipse, it's like maybe the the turning goes slow, 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 and then you get to the eclipse and it goes, you know, and then you go slow, 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 and then again, you go, and with, uh, with Uranus, especially so involved in the eclipse, the, the, the fast part could be extra. It's like double energy of the eclipse. Um, Yeah, and 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 again, so that's there's like this set of energies that's both trying to help us do that releasing, that letting go, so that we can come into the new. And also it's holding space for us to remember that the releasing is gonna be and that the transforming is gonna be an experience of our bodies, of our whole beings, you know, not just um it's not going to be something done through our brains. I, I just don't feel that at all. I feel like it's down here. It's again, in our bodies, in our soul, in our whole being. And it's not something we can control, but we do have the Chericlo energy there holding the space for us and the Hygieia energy, which is, you know, a healing, it's like a healing touch. Um, yeah. And and there's something more in that psyche energy too that I can't quite name or feel yet. But if you have thoughts, please chime in because there's some, there's some, there's other layers there. Um, yeah. And then let's see if there any is there anything else really calling to me? I and mean, there's so many, always so many other facets happening here. But <clears throat> another thing I will name is that today is Wednesday, April 26th. And this morning, the asteroid Lilith went direct. So I just wanted to name that because um, I have been feeling this Lilith energy very strongly because she happens to be going direct basically exactly on my natal sun, uh, my natal moon and my natal ascendant. So she went direct to today at 10 degrees of Virgo 26, 10, 26 Virgo. And my moon and ascendant have to be, happen to be at 11 of Virgo. But I just want to name that for anyone who happens to have really highlighted points around that 10 degrees of Virgo or Pisces or um, Gemini or Sagittarius in particular, that this Lilith energy is, is, you know, she just went direct. So maybe is coming up in some way for you. And um, we just had also Jupiter conjunct Eris Zena. And I just did a free talk a couple of weeks on Eris Zena, which also you can access through my YouTube channel. But um, the Eris Zena energy and the Lilith energy are both this powerful, quote unquote, dark feminine. And they're an energy that's to me about really, especially Lilith is about really getting it, our full power, really getting it that we are literally 
existence itself. We are infinity itself. And there's, it's impossible for there to be anything missing as us. You know, we are whole beings who are the power of source, literally. And um, nothing, it's impossible for anything to take that power from us or to to be the power that us is us we are we are the power of everything um so yeah there's so much more there and actually uh the next goddess coming up in the series that Verena and I are doing is Lilith and I am currently about to read the Living Lilith book by Kelly Hunter <laughs> again Kelly is one of the speakers in the rebecoming the one um uh, symposium and she's going to be doing a workshop in in rebecoming the one on the cosmic feminine this is going to be a one of the optional there be, there's going to be several optional paid workshops as part of rebecoming the one most of it is entirely free and then if you want to go deeper and if you want to you know support the the symposium itself and the work of that there are going to be these optional paid workshops um and Kelly is going to do one of them, which I'm so excited about, so looking forward to personally. She's going to, the cosmic feminine is going to be about um, integrating the moon, Venus, and black moon Lilith in a chart and to go more deeply into the the feminine of a chart and, you know, in her way of thinking of it. So um, yeah, and and then Verena and I will be doing a workshop on Lilith coming up uh, before that um, later in in May of 2023 uh, through our conversations with the goddesses series. So that, you know, if that calls to you, please come to both or either or all of the above. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Lilith energy right now, I'd say is very strong. Aristina energy is very strong. And if you're feeling that, that makes sense. Um, what else? There's so much more, but I think I think those are all the things calling to me at this moment. So I'll just say a little more about rebecoming the one. Um, I made uh, a whole separate introductory video about rebecoming the one, so I'll refer you to that if you want to hear you know a lot about it. Uh, please go to that video where I formally invite you and um, give more details. But the general gist is that Rebecoming the One, this is the second year that I'm hosting this symposium. It was a symposium that came to me um, in a vision on my birthday in March of 2022. So last year. And, uh, you know, I was with a client actually, and in this beautiful location overlooking the Pacific Ocean near where I live. And and I felt this bolt of lightning go through my body and this whole vision of this symposium flashed before my eyes and I was told by the spirit world, do it. So I am, so I did, <laughs> so I, I did and I am. And um, yeah, last year it had 42 speakers. People absolutely loved it. And uh, so I'm doing again, but this year it's going to be, last year was an eight day event. This year, it's going to be a full month event. And it is, you know, there are lots and lots of summits out there. Um, this is not that, this is not just a normal two days here and then gone kind of thing. Um, this is a month long almost entirely free well i would say two-thirds of it is free but a lot of it is free because i want to make it accessible to as many people as possible it is a collaborative joint collective opportunity to do you know collective healing of our relationships to gender and sexuality and many 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 facets of that so this year the request from lots of you and, and people who were there last year is um, to have less content, but more time to integrate it. So the way I've structured it this year is 
really deliberately trying to make it a consciously a, a conscious opportunity for true healing so it's an running over an entire month everything will be recorded available indefinitely um i'm hosting it on my teachable site so you know you'll have your own your own uh place where you can your own library and you can go and and easily access all of the free talks and then any of the paid things that you choose to do. Um, there's, if you want to do the paid options, there's the an all in one bundle, which I have made a sliding scale set of prices for to try to make it as again accessible as possible while still supporting me and the rest of the speakers to do this work because it is a huge amount of work for me. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm a mom and I have two kids that I need to support, including myself. So if you do feel called to participate in it and you are able to financially support it, I would certainly appreciate that a great deal. Um, and if you are not in a position to, to do that, please join anyway. I really want this to be something that can reach as many people as possible. Last year, we had people from 54 different countries sign up. And um, I just realized I was still sharing the uh, the chart, which I didn't need to be doing. <laughs> you can talk directly to me. Um, okay. And yeah, so last year, there were 50 people from 54 different countries. And I'm really hoping and, and holding the intention that, again, this will be something that reaches worldwide and has the ability to bring healing to our entire world, to our collective, to us individually on in many, many different ways on many different levels. And yeah, I just had a lot of feedback last year that, you know, this is like, people said things like this space is the first time I've ever felt safe to be who I am or to talk about the needs of my children around gender or sexual orientation or sexuality or um <clears throat> et cetera et cetera and it's it's also another part of the intention of this is that when we talk about the healing of gender I feel like there's been a lot of work by people who identify as women with regard to the divine feminine and then there's also the men's movement you know where people who typically identify as a man gather together and and talk about uh the needs of men but i i don't see much of anywhere that brings the two together and i also don't see much of anywhere that does so in a way that also incorporates the non-binary um gender fluidity uh transgender reality and that touches on the needs of our youth and especially our queer identified youth um, and holds space for the reality that lots and lots and lots of us don't necessarily identify as heterosexual or cisgender. And, and lots of us do too. I mean, this, this symposium is absolutely for you if you do identify as straight and you identify with the gender that you were identified at birth as. Um, and it's also for you if you identify as any gender and any sexual orientation, it's for everybody, <laughs> everybody and everyone. Um, and yeah, so so I don't see much out there that holds space for this conversation around gender and sexuality to be done in the context of everybody of every gender and of every sexual orientation. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hold space for us all to come together and for it all to be acknowledged, the divine feminine, the divine masculine, the divine person, and then re-become the one. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. I think that's everything for now. I go into more detail in this other video that um, talks, you know, just specifically a, 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 an explanation of the symposium.
So feel free to watch that or just sign up for free. It's all, you know, the free part is available and you can again, watch the, the interview I did with Melanie Reinhardt for free immediately that is available now. Um, and the rest will become available starting on June 1st, 2023. If you're watching this video later than June, 2023, for any reason, uh, it's still available. It's going to be available indefinitely. So still sign up for free and please contact me with any questions, any feedback, any suggestions, um, all of the above, uh, living the one light at gmail.com. I will also say I'm also going to be holding a, my next soul wisdom gathering. Uh, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to be holding two gatherings in May and the rest of my time is going to be pretty much spent preparing for the symposium. But the two gatherings I am holding in May are on May 5th, the day of the eclipse actually is going to be my May deep peace and healing session. So you're all welcome to come to that. That's 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central European time. So that's a time when we're, you know, I, I channel and basically we're held by the spirit world for some kind of experience of deep peace and healing. Um, that's just if you want to just let go into the arms of the divine. That's May 5th. Then two weeks later on May 19th, on the new moon in Taurus coming up after the eclipse, I will hold my May infinite soul wisdom gathering, which again is free for everybody who is a member of my infinite soul wisdom membership, which again starts at $22 a month. And, um, but it's also available for anybody who wants to be just at that gathering. Um, and we're going to drop into the really powerful, uh, energies of that new moon in Taurus and um see what the spirit world I'll, I will also channel something whatever wants is wanting to come through for that new moon at that gathering uh yeah okay I think that's really really it all right I will I hope you're doing well and I will see you soon <laughs>